What's up guys, Andrew Kersley here in Digital Marketing for Entrepreneurs. And it's been a minute since I've done a live training in here. So I'm super stoked to bring this one to you. These are the seven crucial questions for you to become a better coach or manager. Um, actually got these from a book called The Coaching Habit um, by, I think his name's Daniel Mate, something like that. Um, and I was just taking a flight back from Miami to San Diego, beautiful house here, beautiful view. Um, taking, what's up, Will? It's been a minute. Um, so I was taking flight back, listening to the book, took down some notes and these questions are freaking phenomenal. So we're going to go through what those seven questions are, uh, why you should be asking them and, uh, ultimately what result they produce. Um, and also we're going to go into some other frameworks that I thought were super freaking cool um, that you can start implementing into your life um, immediately. Um, if you guys have any questions at any time, just drop them down below. If it has anything to do with uh, coaching or course creation or managing a team or building out systems, anything like that, we will dive into that as well. Um, and let's just hop right into it. And Will, what's up? If you guys like any of this information, uh, feel free to uh, hit the heart button, hit the like button, all of that good stuff. So if you are a coach or if you are a course creator, hashtag coach down below. If you're a coach, hashtag course creator. If you are a course creator down below. So let me share my screen here. Boop, 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 boop. And we will dig into it. Boop, boop, boop. So um, when you're a course or a coach or a manager, it's crucial that you have a clear idea of what your um, the person that you're talking to, what their problems are, and ultimately what they what they want. Um, so one of the best ways to start out a conversation on a coaching call or with one of your employees is just simply saying, hey, what's on your mind? So what this will do is pull out a lot of information out of the person. Um, a lot of times our coaching, um, coaching calls, our one-on-one -on -one calls, uh, conversations with employees, start off with a lot of banter. And this question will bridge the gap between the banter and conversation that actually matters. Like when you just ask somebody, hey, what's on your mind? People talk about what's most important, what's on the top of the mind to them. And like with Facebook, that's their first question. When you are on your personal page and you're writing out a new post, it's what's on your mind. They had it, then they took it away and then they re-implemented it. It is such a good fucking question. So um, it's open-ended. It gets people to talk about what's really important to them. And what you can dive into from here when they're just spewing out all this information is redirect the conversation to what's most important. So this is an amazing, amazing model to use. The three Ps of coaching. So you have uh, projects, you have people, and you have patterns. So the first with projects, this is very specific. So um, let's say that somebody says, well, on top of my mind, uh, I, um, I'm i really focused on my webinar and uh, I'm having blank, blank and blank issue and I don't know how to fix it. So fixing those problems specific to um, a very specific project or something very specific, um, then that would be a pro uh, you would be doing project coaching. So this is all the, everything that has to do with performance. Um, so are there certain projects that we need to fix? But if somebody is saying that I'm having trouble in this blank, blank and blank relationship, I don't know how to navigate it, then you'll be doing people coaching. And then um, the last one is patterns. So this is um, development. So are there patterns coming up in your life uh, that we need to adjust? So if somebody is constantly self-sabotaging, we wanna identify what those tr triggers are. And if we're able to help people with those triggers and overcome those triggers and interrupt those patterns, that is pattern coaching. 
So there are three P's of coaching, projects, people, patterns. So if you can identify what coaching you're going into, then you'll be a better coach. So when people just spew things off the top of their mind, then you can identify if you're going to have to wear the project coaching hat, the people coaching hat, or the pattern coaching hat. Let me know down below if that makes sense to you guys, and we'll dive into the next question. What's up, Grant? Glad you're here. Tasha, thanks for tagging everybody. If you guys have any questions at any time, drop them down below. But the, um, the next question is the golden question of coaching, and it's very, very, very underutilized. And the question is, and what else? So what does this do? This creates more options. And when we have more options, that leads to better decisions. And um, more options leads, better decisions leads to more success. So when somebody is just talking, 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 and then there is a pause in the conversation, um, you can get more options from them by just simply asking, and what else? So this will also slow you down from trying to instantly fix the problem. So uh, I know when I first started coaching, I was like, okay, here's the solution to your problem. Let me fix it right away. But it's better to get as much information out of them as possible. And this applies to your, co your sales calls too. Get as much out of the person as possible so you can really identify what their problems are, how you can fix it, and ultimately what their desired outcome is. So asking and what else is one of the best questions that you can ask to uh, your students, your clients, your employees. So um, this will also slow you down from giving undue advice. So instead of just like them saying something and then you think their problem is blank, then just spewing out an answer. If you ask and what else, it will give you more options to pick out like what you actually need to help them with. And the next question goes into that as well, to refine the focus. So if you ask your, your clients, your, um, your students, uh, your employees, what is the real challenge here for you? And ask it in that way. So when you ask, what is the challenge? People will think of a bunch of different challenges. When you add the word real in there, it makes it very specific to one thing. So identifying the biggest problem, the biggest challenge that you're, um, that the person that you're talking to is facing. And then um, what's the real challenge here for you, making it specific to them internal. So it allows you to understand the real problem so that you're fixing what really matters. So asking these questions on your coaching calls are super duper important. Um, then the fourth question is, what do you want? So this is what's considered the foundational question. So you want to uncover what they really want. So you're helping them with their intended goal. So um, this question can get messy and people, it's, some people just don't know what they want. So when you are able to help them walk through um, what their ultimate vision is, what they actually want, you'll get more clear on the problems that they're facing, um, getting to that goal and ultimately what they desire out of their business, out of their life, out of their um, fitness, out of their finances. So asking this question, or what help do you want from me? Sorry, this is the lazy question. Um, and it forces them to make a direct and real uh, and clear request. So um, it uh, forces them to be very specific on what they want help with. Um, because people might be saying their challenges, their desires, all of that, but you wanna get very clear on what they specifically need help with most. And asking this question stops you from actually thinking that you know what is best to help them and it puts it in their court and saying, hey, what do you actually need help with? Blah, blah, blah. Um, question number six, I thought was super interesting. Um, and something really, really good to ask yourself as well. So this is called the strategic question. If you're saying yes to this, what are you saying no to? I thought this was super fucking interesting. 
Because if you're saying yes to, let's say a webinar, for example, yes, I'm going to do a webinar, what are you saying no to? Because that webinar is going to take time. I'm saying no to in-person events. I'm saying no to uh, going to networking events. I'm saying no to uh, time that I could be using to hire a team member. So if you do this, what are you saying no to? What are the ramifications? This helps you get super clear if this is the best thing to do at this time. So even asking yourself, hey, if I'm saying yes, if I'm saying yes to go to the gym right now, what am I saying no to? I'm saying no to spending more time with my girlfriend. I'm saying no to calling my uh, parents. I'm saying no to uh, reading a book that might help. This is a really fucking awesome question to ask uh, your clients and also yourself. So if you're saying yes to this, what are you saying no to? And I'm and for you guys, can you identify anything right now that you're saying yes to that is limiting your options of something that you probably should be doing? So when you procrastinate, you're saying yes to lesser things and you're saying no to that big thing. Are you doing any of that right now? Um, and then lastly, this is super cool. So what was most useful for you? This is the best question to end your conversations because people don't really learn when you tell them something. They don't really learn uh, when they actually do that thing. But when they reflect on that thing, they actually learn it. They actually ingrain it into their brain. So when you're talking to an employee or a client, Asking them what was most useful for you is an amazing way to actually help them ingrain it. So out of these seven questions, I'm going to ask you guys, what was most useful to you? What was your favorite question? What, uh, what uh, did I bring up that was most useful to you? So those are the seven questions. And we actually have some models down here. I showed you one. And guys, this is for you. So if uh, you write it down, you will ingrain it a lot better into uh, into you, who you are as a person. Um, so what was the number one thing that stood out to you in this presentation? And these are a couple other frameworks that I got uh, from the book. So um, the two types of coaching, there's performance coaching and there's development coaching. So performance coaching is focused on a very specific problem to improve performance. So that's uh, the projects P. And then there's development coaching that is focused on calling, uh, calling you forward to improve and grow. So this is interrupting patterns, interrupting triggers to ultimately help you grow as a person instead of just focused on a project like a webinar, right? So you have two different types of coaching, performance and development. I thought that was a super awesome distinction. And then one thing um, that I thought was super cool was the drama triangle. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot of um, a, a big description here or anything, but I thought the drama triangle was super interesting. So when you are triggered, there are three different modes that people go into. And usually people go into all three modes and they can go into all three modes in the same situation. But there is a primary mode that we go into when we are triggered. So there's the rescuer, the uh, uh, persecutor, and the victim. So you can probably identify people um, that go into these modes. So the victim, they feel powerless, they feel hopeless, they feel stuck, and they think, oh, poor me. Um, the uh, persecutor blames people. It's all your fault. You're controlling, superior, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then the rescuer, uh, I tend to go into this mode a lot. Um, it's poor you, let me help you. Um, you enable people. You create victims, actually. Um, and it keeps victims dependent. So it's really cool to identify what mode you go into when uh, people are triggered in conversation or, or in conversations or situations. So for example, last night I was on the plane and uh, a guy ordered Pringles and he didn't have a credit card uh, to pay for the Pringles, he had cash. So I decided to take out my credit card and hand it to um, the, uh, the flight attendant to pay for it. But ultimately he, 
he wanted to pay for it. I left him in victim mode and probably not feeling the best. So really, it's not best to be a rescuer, a persecutor, or the victim, but uh, they all have their upsides and they all have their their downsides. Um, something that I'm going to get into a little bit more and research the the dra- drama triangle a little bit more. Um, I thought it was really, really fucking cool. Um, yeah, and Will, this was from uh, The Coaching Habit by Daniel Maté. Um, I listened to it on Audible. And I'm going to get it. Um, I'm going to get a physical copy. I'm going to order that shortly. But a lot of cool frameworks. Like my main focus for this year is um, growth and frameworks. And just one quote that I love is frameworks, not hard work. Like identify what the step-by-step processes actually are and the frameworks actually are. And it will save you a lot of time and will prevent you from trying to recreate the wheel. Um, so, yeah, that's why I'm doing it. But yeah, guys, I hope this was helpful. If you guys haven't done so yet, drop below um, what was most useful for you here and it will help you ingrain ingrain it into your brain. Um, And that's how you actually learn when you reflect on what you're actually hearing, what you're actually consuming. Um, So it's pretty cool. But I'm going to flip back here. I have a few more minutes, so if you guys want to ask any questions, drop them down below uh, right now. Um, But yeah, I'd love to help you out with anything that comes to business um, or personal life, whatever. Um, What's going on right now for me is I'm launching a live event with 150, we're aiming for 150 attendees, um, the Tribe of Buyers live event, hosting it here in San Diego, so I'm super stoked for that. Um, we just had our best month last month with over $150,000 worth of contracts. And we did a little over $70,000 in cash collected last month. So that was sweet. Um, and then what else did we do? Um, I traveled with my girlfriend for the past two weeks, which was fucking awesome. We went to we went to Denver. We went to Cleveland. We went to Miami. It was a fucking blast. Um, we realized we really miss San Diego and this amazing view. Um, and yeah, it's just been amazing this past, um, this past year, starting in January, I really focused on creating a legitimate business, creating systems, creating operations, creating processes and creating a team. Like I have seven people on my team now that are just eight players and fucking awesome. Um, and it's so much better to, um, create something with people rather than being that solo entrepreneur and just doing it yourself. Um, so it's really cool. Um, and that's, that's, uh, that's what I got going right now. And Grant, uh, as you teach, you learn. I totally agree. Um, being a coach, um, being a course creator, um, teaching people and giving people your knowledge is so fucking powerful and so rewarding. Um, when I was running my advertising agency, I didn't feel this, sense of fulfillment like I do with coaching people. And more than um, course creation, where I felt like I was hiding behind videos with um, with coaching, you're impacting people on a deep level. Um, and uh, it's just so much more powerful. But Dean, thanks for the emojis. Love you, brother. Uh, Grant, thanks for being here. Uh, Matt, Will, thanks, buddy. Um, also, we have a mastermind coming up uh july 25th through 27th um there are a few spots left if you want to hang out with some awesome six and seven figure entrepreneurs send me a dm uh, and we can talk about it i can give you more details and yeah guys hope this is helpful and i will uh see you guys later